buhay na pinagpala. At salamat din po sa online class na pagkalooban mo po ng strong wifi connection and strong internet ang lahat ng mga mag-aaral at magpokonek sa amin. Bless Lord the YouTube and the Zoom. And bless us with electricity throughout the whole day. And thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, for guiding us and teaching, O Lord God, your people, the way you are. You have taught the disciples that you are present in our midst through the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. Ito po ang ating lesson ngayon sa mga mag-aaral ng hermeneutics. Mapalad po kami kayo kasi nakakapag-aral po kayo ng hermeneutics sa online. Okay. At ito po ay nandoon po tayo sa chapter ng The Parabolic Principle. At ang definition, this is the principle by which any parable sa Tagalog talinhaga. <coughs> the others in uh, the other English version in synonym calls this A uh, riddle, it called, they also call this a proverb, which is interpreted by discerning its moral, which is the character, and interpreting its elements. So what are the elements contained in, uh, in the verse, in the text, in the Bible scripture reference, and uh, whatever it is that you have read and that it needs to be interpreted. That then the, in the amplification, we have a de definition that a parable is a short, simple story from which there is a moral lesson that will be drawn from it. It is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. That's the second uh, definition. The third it is the relevant terms in the scripture that will be considered. So in the Old Testament term, this, uh, this is called mashol or moshol. Yeah. And uh, the, the maxim usually for a metaphorical nature hints a simile. A simile is using the word like, as, according to. Yeah. So whenever you have that, um, a it is a proverbial saying. It is a similitude. Simile and similitude, they are one and same. It means uh, also a resemblance. And the word moshol from the Hebrew Old Testament, it is uh, translated in English as parable or as a proverb. The other one, they call this a saying. Yeah, parable, a proverb. Also, they have translated that as riddles. We know that riddles is different. So these are your references. It will be great if you have a notebook and you write in full all these references, not just read it and then close your Bible and then also forget it. No, that's not the purpose. Your New Testament word uh, in Greek is parabole. It means a similitude, a fictitious narrative, which means a common life or uh, the ordinary, the natural life that will tell you a moral lesson. It is placing of one thing by the side of another. That means to say, 
there is a one picture that you have to see on the other side. The other side is blank and the other side is you don't understand. But then on the other side also, there is a real picture. It's like saying that you are looking at the abstract painting and you do not understand it. But then uh, the artist gave the interpretation of that abstract one. Yeah. So that you will be able to see it with your uh, understanding, not on your physical eyes, but with your uh, visualized eye. A comparison <clears throat> of one thing with another. It is a narrative, it is fictitious, but agreeable to the loss and usages of human life by which either the duties of men are the things of God, particularly the nature and history of God's kingdom are figuratively for portrayed. All right, so here we will have a comparison, meaning the, the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are called the synoptic the harmony, harmonious gospel. And uh, in order to understand so well the scope of the parable, it, good, it is good to have a comparison. Yeah? Like, for example, the, the parable of the mustard seed, which is uh, written in Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Also, it is written in Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32. And also, it is written in Luke chapter 13, verses 18 to 19. Yeah? Uh, your references will be here. And that you will find out they are not uh, the... You cannot find that uh, three comparative lesson on the book of St. John. Yeah. So that you are learning here these uh, lessons. Yeah. It is a figure of the things to come. So it's like a shadow. It's like a typology. If it is a shadow, that means to say that the person who is behind the shadow is the real person. The shadow is not, is not on its an anti-type, but the real one is the picture. The parable, so you, you have all these references, but we are talking of the comparison, comparison of the lesson in the mustard seed. So you have the mustard seed, you will read that in uh, Matthew 13, 31, 32. In Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to 32, and in Luke chapter 13, verses 18 to 19. All right? Since this is comparison, you are going to be reading not only in Mark, but also in Matthew and in the book of Luke, so that you will see the difference between the three. Okay, so let's, let's look at it. Tignan po natin ano ang difference by reading actual. All right. Uh, we will be going first into Matthew 13, 31 because Mark 4, 30 is, is already given. Now let's read it. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. So you see, the word like is a comparison. All right? A man takes a mustard seed. It's a seed. Have you ever seen mustard, um, mustard sandwich filling? Yeah, it's yellow, 
but they you have you have already seen that in the form of uh, uh, liquid like suitable, uh, not liquid, not also solid, but it is a filling for a sandwich. Yeah. Uh, a man takes a mustard seed and sows it, and he sowed it in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. How small is uh, that? It is smaller than the lentil, lentil seed, yeah? But when it grows up, it is the biggest of all plants, all right? So we are going to say in another version, it is the biggest of all the, uh, the bushes. It's a bush because a bush is bigger than the plant and smaller than a tree. Right, so it is like in between. And this uh, plant is growing bigger until it becomes a tree so that the birds come or flock into the tree and make their nests in the branches. That's how it is recorded in the book of Matthew. We go to the book of Mark. Chapter 4, we will be reading verse 30, and it says, What shall we say? The kingdom of God is like. So, did you see? The, did you notice the in here? Jesus told a parable the kingdom of heaven is like this. But in uh, the book of Mark, it's saying, What shall we say? The kingdom of God is like this one in the Matthew, the kingdom of heaven. Here in Mark, the kingdom of God is like, asked Jesus, what parable shall we use to explain it? It is like a man that takes a mustard seed, the smallest seed in the world. So here he said this is the smallest seed in the world. His explanation is a little bit farther and the plants it in his ground, not just a field. After a while, it grows up and becomes the biggest of all plants. Plants, it puts out such large branches that the birds come and make their nests in its uh, shade. Have you ever seen an oak tree? All right, if you've seen an oak tree, it is flourishing with its branches. And this uh, mustard seed would be more or less like the oak tree. Jesus preached his message to the people. He used many other parables like this. And he told them as much as they could understand. He would not speak to the people or to the crowd without using parables. But when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain the parables to them. All right. So it's very important for us to know that the Lord God is using these parables. By the way, you are ha having that. <clears throat> you will see from my uh, the sending of these notes into my notebook. Okay, it is here, see? Parable of the sower. In Matthew 13, 1 to 9, Mark 4, 1 to 9, Luke 8, 4 to 8. That's not the one. The parable of the, the purpose of the parables. Yeah, and Jesus explained the parables, the parable of tares and weeds, the parable of the mustard seed. This is the first one that we have picked up, the parable of the mustard seed. And uh, Jesus used parables. Why? It has an explanation. There are other parables here, but do you know? that there are 48 parables 
uh, listed here. There are 46 from the beginning, but there are two others that are to be added to this. That means to say there are 48 parables, but here we have 46. Yeah? And you will be able to understand what I mean with the com comparative hermeneutics where you are going to compare in the harmony of the gospel, which is we call in one word, synoptic. Synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And sometimes in the harmony of the gospel or in the synopsis, there is also a record of John. Uh, yeah. So here, uh, here is your parables, yeah? So that you will know what they are. So many for you to study, for you to learn. And if you are indeed learner, indeed student, and you are an avid and a diligent student, you will not just be listening to this lecture of ours, but you are going to be reading a lot, a lot of these parables. Yeah? Okay. Dahil mahaba po yung ating lalakbayin, we needed to go uh, ahead. So that, theologically speaking, a parable is fictitious. It is true to human life. The story is designed to illustrate by the way of comparison, such as the, hem the kingdom of heaven is like this, the kingdom of God is like this. So you did, you like this, meaning blank, blank, blank. And it has a comparison of some spiritual truth that you will learn from the sayings or parables. The purpose of the parables was one of Christ's main method of teaching. He indicated that his reason for using them was twofold. Number one, to reveal the truth only to those who are open and hungry-hearted. Open-minded, hungry-hearted. That Then they will understand that such as his own disciples. In Matthew 13, 9, 12 to 16 and 19. The second purpose, to conceal. To conceal means to hide. Yeah, to hide the truth from those who are closed minded and hard hearted. Those people with unbelief, these people with faith. Yeah, to reveal truth to those who are with faith, these, those who have unbelief. And the sources, Jesus took his parables from two major uh, sources. Yeah, okay, wait. And number one source, in the realm of creation. From the, those parables, he used the symbols of seed, the wheat, the tares, the fish, the leaven or yeast, the pearls, the sheep. What else? Let, is, let us see what we have listed in the parables here. Yeah, okay. And another is about the cloth, the old cloth, the new cloth. The old uh, wine skin or bottle, the wine, the lampstand, the salt, the, the rock, the sand, what else? Money and shekels, the torch light, or okay. the, the, the barns. Yes, the harvest, the field. Also, 
the others, the, the fig tree, the soil. He also took the seeds, uh, rather the thorns, the corn, the wheat, the barley, the mustard seed, the treasure, the pearl, the fishing net, uh, the house, the sheep, the gate, the shepherd, this, this gate, shepherd and sheep, or uh, is what we call relationship, master and his servant, the unmerciful and merciful servant, the good Samaritan, what else? Um, he had taken the coin, yes, the workers, that is relationship. Also, the Minas, yeah. He had taken also the food in the banquet and uh, many others. So that you have already the sources from where Jesus used that parable. <clears throat> so that number two, the realm of human relationship. From there in the list of parables, using such relationship as the father and son, the servant and the master, the bride and the groom, the widow and the judge, yeah, the friends who are who is in need and the friend who would give. What else? Uh, you will be able to read more of relationship in the list of our parables. <clears throat> the classification is that there is much difference of opinion among Bible scholars. Yeah, the definition and the classification of the parables in the scripture. Although a few accept only the parables designated by scripture as such, most scholars allow for a broader definition. Okay, most of all agree that a parable is an extended simile. Remember, it is an extended simile. But there is much disagreement over where the boundary line should be placed between simile and parable. Thus, in tabulating parables, there is among scholars a wide range, more, farther, wider, bigger, yeah, of numbers. Although various scholars have suggested several ways of classifying these parables for the sake of simplicity for the students and we will classify them as follows. There are three classific uh, there are two classification. One, it is short parables. Two, they are extended parables. When we are saying extended, they are wide range, bigger, huge, farther. Yeah. The short parables would be an example. Jesus Christ, according to Isaiah 53, 7, and according to Acts 8, 32, he was led like as. So here you will see the word as, and the other, if I will take as, I'm going to replace that with like. So it will become, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. Here, the simile is using as. He, Jesus was led as a sheep to the slaughter because Jesus was the sacrifice for sin, the Lamb of God. It's a simile. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Jesus' eyes is not fire, okay, but it is like, as you see, they were as or they were like a flame of fire. 
All right, as assembly. My, you will read that in Revelation 114. My beloved is like a row. Here, the word like is being used. What is a row? R-O-E. It is a deer. Usa. A deer. Okay. In the book of Song of Solomon 2.9, it is also called a simile. On the other hand, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed. Yeah. So they, then we have read, read that. And then it is designated, the mustard seed parable is designated as a short parable. Short. Now, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, this is another parable, who had uh, 10 pieces of silver or 10 pieces of coins. Ito ang tawag po natin dito, uh, pera ng uh, ikinasal. If she lost one piece, he lighted a candle, she lighted a candle and sweep the house and sought diligently that lost one lost coin until she would find it. And when she did find it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, rejoice with me, for I have the peace which I lost, and now I found it. It is an undesignated short parable, the lost coin of the 10 coins. And there was a little city with few men within. There was a great king against it. And they were besieged or circled around and built great bulwarks against it. His enemy did that. Now there was found in it a poor wise man and he, the man who was poor by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man after deliverance. Yeah, it is an undesignated short parable. Again, short parable. So we, we get to the extended parables. And they differ from the short parables primarily because of its length and in the number of pairs of details which can be compared. A short parable will generally include two or five pairs which an extended parable will include. So if they are two or five. An extended parable must also be distinguished from an allegory. Allegory is uh, like Comparative also, but we will be studying that in your allegorical principle later by God's grace. Some examples of extended parables are parable of the sower, a designated extended parable, the parable of the prodigal son, an undesignated extended parable. The parable of the vineyard, an undesignated parable. So about this, the sower, the prodigal son or the lost son, and then also the vineyard that was lent to the tenants. They were three of them for undesignated parables, but they are extended parables, okay? The conclusion, the literary method of parabolic communication used in writing the scripture gives rise. <coughs> to the parabolic principle of interpreting scripture. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Okay, we will go to qualification. 
the first step of this is to make certain that the passage under consideration is a parable. A parable being an extended simile has one main focal point of comparison, but it is the whole of the parable that is the comparison. It is a comparison between natural rain and the spiritual rain. The natural uh, object by the spiritual understanding, each and understanding and explanation. Each of the details given concerning the natural have the correspondence to the spiritual. However, they are all vitally related to the focal point of the comparison. This can be illustrated with the kingdom of heaven parable in Matthew 13, 33. The following questions could be asked concerning this comparison. Is the kingdom of heaven like unto leaven or yeast? Or is the kingdom of heaven like unto leaven which a woman took? Or is the kingdom of heaven like unto leaven which a woman took and hid? Or is the kingdom of heaven like unto leaven or yeast which a woman took? hid in three measures of flour? Or is the kingdom of heaven like unto the leaven or yeast which a woman took and hid in the three measures of meal or flour until the whole was leavened? So you see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. They, they are called, we call this the degree. Yeah, Go, going into uh, the degree of explanation. Again, the other, the, the first one is only the beginning, and then there is additional. Where was it hidden? Uh, who took that? Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like unto 11. So, who took the 11? It's the woman. And then what happened to the living that the woman took? She hid it. Where did that woman who took the living hide that living in the three measures of flour? Okay. So which a woman after hiding the three measures of uh, that, that leaven into three measures of meal, what happened to the meal or to the flour? The whole flour of three measures, they were all yeasted or leavened. It has uh, blown up. Yes. So every parable is designed to conceal, that is to hide, to reveal, that is to open one fundamental spiritual truth. In order to perceive the point of the parable, the significance of each part must be recognized. In other words, the whole cannot be interpreted apart from the interpretation of its parts. This is the what the way we mean. You cannot just interpret it, interpret it without the parts that you have to add and add and add until it will be completed. As with all of scripture, the interpretation of parables must move from whole to part and from part to whole. All the details of a parable find their significance, their symbols, their figures in relation to its main point. So that uh, A, B, C, D, on the fourth part, four, five, six, and seven. Interp in interpreting the parts of the parable, the interpreter must allow scripture to interpret scripture. How? 
by using the context. What is a context? If you are going to read only starting verse 9, but you're supposed to be reading the verse 8 and uh, verse 7 and 8 before you will be reading verse 9, then you have the context, the moral and the symbolic principles. Many times the key to the interpretation of the parable must be found in its immediate context. Parables often involve various symbols, which must be properly interpreted before the lesson of the parable can be rightly discerned. Some parables are drawn from the cultural background of the authors, the writers. The interpreter should research the manners of that uh, time, the customs, the material culture involved in the parable that he is interpreting. The doctrine should not be found founded solely upon the parabolic teaching. Although parables primarily illustrate doctrine, any doctrine they do to teach must be viewed in its harmony with the clearly defined teachings of the scripture. So what is the distinction? It must be made between parable and allegory. You have to refer when we are going to study allegorical principle. We have the demonstration. <clears throat> Christ's demonstration. Jesus himself, as the teacher, he demonstrated this principle when he interpreted the extended parable of the weight and tears. Weight and tears. This is trigo at chaka dawag. Sometimes they call this barley at chaka dawag. But in English, the wheat and the barley are two different classifications. All right, so the parable in Matthew 13, 24 to 30, and the interpretation will be found in Matthew 13, 36 to 43, which is, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. Who is the man? It was the son of man who is the sower, and that is Jesus, the son of man. He sowed seeds. The seed is likened into the children of the kingdom. So the good seed is the children of the kingdom. Okay. The other one, it is also among the believers when it is planted, it is the word of God. Okay. In his field, it was planted in his field. The field is the world. And the field also speaks of the various soil of man's heart. Yes, the, each heart is a different uh, heart likened into a different variable soil. And the enemy who planted the tares or the, the weeds or the thorns was the devil. He sowed tares or weeds or thorns. And that is, they are the children of the wicked one. The wheat grow. And the tears grow also together until the harvest was waited. The harvest is the end of the age, the end of the world. The reapers or harvesters, the angels of God. The tears or the weeds bundled together when they were pulled up 
and uh, the the tares who are the wicked, they will be gathered together and will be cast into the fire. That is the tares bundled together, burned to be casted and burned into the fire. The wheat, they are gathered together and brought into the barn of God. And this speaks the wheat, the righteous men and the righteous people that shine in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So Jesus stated the lesson to be the end of the age when he had given this parable. <clears throat> the wicked and the righteous will be separated unto the eternal distance. The short parables, he said to them, that therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which brightened forth out of his treasure things new and old. As you can see, it is only very short. Here in this page, you have only, uh, it's like two sentences. Yeah, more than two sentences. The key to the interpretation of this parable is found in Jesus' question to his disciples in verse 51. Have ye understood? The word ye is plural, which is referring to the second person plural. The crowd he was referring to interpret this undesignated parable. We will interpret each of the parts of that in it and comprise it. So the parable of the householder is about this refers to the scribe and the disciple. The treasure of the house refers to the heart of the people the scribes and the disciples. The things new, it refers to the new teachings of truth and the things old, it refers to the old teachings of truth. And you have the reference in Matthew 13, verses 51 to 52. The moral lesson of this parable is, as every disciple has received instruction in the things of the kingdom, he must also instruct others in the same way. Extended parables is the parable of the vineyard because it is very long. To interpret this designated parable first, the parallel should be studied. In Mark and Luke, you have to compare that when you are studying so that you can, uh, we, that's why it is called extended. Yeah. Under the comparative mention principle, having gathered all the details, we will now interpret them in using this principle. The parable of the householder God the Father is the one who owns the, uh, the house and the family. He is the head of the family. Planted a vineyard and he hedged it. Hedge means fence. Put a guard or a fence around that uh, plantation. What is a vineyard? A vineyard is planting the grapes. Yeah, that is grapes in the vineyard. That's why when you have uh, grapes plants, they are called uh, vineyard. Yes. And it refers to that vineyard is refers to the nation of Israel. And you have the interpretation in Isaiah 5.1 and in Psalms 80 verse 9. He did a wine press. Why? Because there is a vineyard. A vineyard, they are grapes that will be producing a lot 
of uh, wine. But they had to be gathered first and then they had to be pressed down in the winery. That's why it is called wine press. The, uh, it, this winery will press down, squish down the wine, the, the vines or the grapes, turning it into wine. And also, at the same time, he built a watchtower. Yeah. The wine press speaks of Isaiah 5, 1 to 7. And uh, the tower is the guard tower. So the father, not only that he had uh, the, the nation of the, the vineyard, but also he put up a guard that will be watching over the wine press. Let it was uh, this vineyard was uh, leased. You know what? Leased. The other term for leased is let out. Pinaupa. Pinaupahan. Yung vineyard na ito, pinaupa, pinaupa sa mga husbandmen that this uh, let out is the synonym of the word leased or rented to. Okay, the vineyard was for rent. Who rented that vineyard? They were represented by rulers, by kings, by priests, by the elders of Jerusalem, of Israel. And this householder or the owner of that vineyard, he went into a far country so that you will know that Jesus afterwards, he, he ascended into heaven and that he said, uh, it will be a while I will go unto my father. If it is not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I have prepared a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And that is in St. John chapter 14. So this Jesus, he went into his heaven, which is called the heavenly country. You will read that in Hebrews 11, 11 to 16. The time of the fruit, fruit drew near before Jesus will come in his second coming. So that before he will come, he sent his servants, the prophets, in order to uh, relay and preach the message of God about his son, about uh, the coming of the Savior and the coming back of his son. The husbandmen who had rented the, vine, the vineyard, they had treated the prophet's servants, messengers, evilly, cruelly, cruelly. they killed them and they rejected the prophets. So you will be reading that he said, it says there in Matthew, in Isaiah. I keep on sending my prophets earlier, but you have not deceived and you have not listened to them. Jesus uh, wooed them. He said, who unto you because you have killed the prophets. Yeah. And greater than those prophets was there. And that is Jesus. But this prophet, the last prophet, they also killed him. More servant was sent. More prophets were sent. Major prophets, minor prophets, who have written the books of the Old and the New Testament. They treated him, them, likewise, in Jeremiah and in the book of Kings, the last of all, he, the, the householder, Father God, 
would send he sent his own son on earth but what happened because they said ah this is the heir let us kill him and we do not need to rent the vineyard it will be ours yeah so the husbandmen killed the heir of all things jesus christ the only begotten son and they caught jesus the heir in gethsemane he was caught and they cast him out of the vineyard they they caught him in the gethsemane they have uh, casted him outside the city of jerusalem they slew him by hanging him on a tree in crucifixion the lord of the husbandmen miserably destroyed this band husbandmen jerusalem was destroyed in ad 70 and he let out the vineyard to other husbandmen to get fruits so the kingdom they were taken from the jury and it was given to a nation who would render the fruits of righteousness of God and the goodness of God. As you will see, who took, it was lent out to another uh, husbandman. Jerusalem was taken. It was taken from one, um, one nation to another nation. They, were, they have conquered Jerusalem. They have conquered Judea. So we will see this is learning uh, the parables. It is very good. Yeah. You print them down. You make small uh, lesson or you, you copy it in a very small notebook so that you can carry that all the time in your Bible. You make a pocket of your Bible and you put this all together. Sometimes we are going to be learning also and uh, have all the, the miracles of Jesus, all the healings record. Yeah. So we will see here uh, how the parable this is my study, and I, I'm doing a study in the Matthew 13. I, I have finished chapter 1 up to chapter 17. So now I am in chapter 17. This is what I do. I, I do a com comparative principle. Yeah. Also, I do a what we call this a typological principle. I also do a literal principle study out from these ones. Okay, so you, what, what was that that you are going to learn from here? About Jesus riding in a boat. He was preaching to a large crowd because they were too large that he had to make that boat as his uh, pulpit or podium and then he had spoken about you know the parables here we call this the extended parable parable of the sower what are the purpose of the parables for them to be healed in john in matthew 13 16 jesus said how blessed you are, how fortunate you are. Your eyes have seen, your ears have heard. Uh, and I assure you that many prophets and many of God's people wanted very much to see what you see, but they could not see it. To hear what you hear, but they could not hear it. Yeah. Uh, so Jesus explained the parable of the sower to his disciples. As uh, so we will see, there are so many things for us to learn about this uh, 
parable study. When you are learning about the explanation of the parable of the hidden treasure, so many things, very good. If you can have pictures also. The parable of the pearl. What is that pearl? That, that Jesus said, do not throw your pearls to the dogs. Yeah. Those who, who are not worthy to, this, to receive the word of God, don't give it to them. They will just mock you and they will trample the word that is likened unto a pearl. They will just reject it, just like they have rejected the living word, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The parable of the dragnet. And in this dragnet, so many kinds of uh, assorted fish from the sea. They were all caught. That includes the poisonous fish. But then the Lord is saying that there are so many also people, various kinds of people. Those that are not worthy they have to be thrown back into the sea only those that are good would be taken from the sea the new truths and the old truths uh, it's very important that we will learn how to connect the old testament to the new testament and uh, using the new testament as the fulfillment already of the old testament Yes, so you have your lessons here. And uh, I believe it is very good to understand. In Psalm 78, verse 2, and also the Canticon, chapter 7, verse 13. It says there, I am going to use wise sayings, that is, parables, and explain the mysteries from the past, which is the old truths. Things that we have heard and things we have known, things that our ancestors told us from the past, which was from the old truths. We will keep them not. That means we will reveal, we will explain, we will impart them, show them, share them with our children. We will tell to the next generation, even those that are not yet born, about the Lord's power and his great deeds, his mighty acts. Yeah. And the wonderful things that God has done. Yes. He gave the laws to his people. Then we have canticom. Canticom is a Latin word for song of songs. And uh, the other one is in Hebrew, it is called Sher Hashirim. Yeah, chapter 7, verse 13. Because you might be like other people, you know, I went into somewhere and then when I returned, they have reported to me. Mom, they have made uh, one person preach. And uh, she preached from the wrong doctrine. I said, what, what wrong doctrine? Because she read from the canticum. Well, canticum is the Latin word for song of songs. The other translation is song of Solomon. The translation of song of songs in Hebrew is sheer hashirim. Yeah, 7 verse 13. You can smell the scent or the, the fragrance 
of mandrakes. Mandrakes is uh, like the fruit of dragon, dragon fruit. And all the pleasant fruits are near our door. Darling, I have kept for you the old delights and the new delights. Because we are talking of the new truths and the old truths. The new delights and the old delights. They were all kept together for the beloved to know, to hear, to see, to understand, to receive. Yeah, it's very good for uh, God's people and the students of the word of God to learn about this. So do not be alarmed when you read this cantico. Many people, they do not want to know what is cantico. Ah, thank you, Lord, by God's grace. Okay. Now we are in uh, our last part. So you do you think that you have learned something from this? I hope you did. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right. So, my dear Alma and Janet, have you learned something from this study? Okay. Where are you now? Janet, Emeline, they are in their cell phone. Well, anyhow, time is up. It's already our closing time and closing prayer. Because uh, I could not see anybody. I'm. Are you there, Alma? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, and. <laughs> Will you? Will you then close us in prayer? Even yes, just Lord. support only. Amen. Salamat Panginoon sa napakalawak mong mensahe patungkol sa pag-interpret po ng Bible. Natunay nga Panginoon na kailangan po namin ito para sa mga tao na meron pong iba-ibang paniniwala patungkol Panginoon sa salita mo. Salamat sa mga parables na ipinakita mo sa amin, na nagbigay sa amin, Panginoon Lord God, ng tamang katuroan kung paano po namin ito ibibigay sa tao. Salamat din, Panginoon, sa aming teacher, kay Ma'am Yoli, Lord. sa mga estudyante po, Panginoon Lord God, na nakakasama po namin dito, maging sa YouTube. Pagpalaan mo ang bawat isa, o Diyos, na patuloy po namin, Aman, na ibahagi ang salita mo, Panginoon, na may katotohanan. Nananalangin din po kami, Panginoon, sa mga naliligaw o Diyos ng landas ng katuroan na tinawag mo, patuloy mo sila, Panginoon, Lord God, na ilagay sa vineyard doon po, Panginoon, sa iyong kaharian, sa iyong ubasan, Panginoon. Yung mga tinawag mo, Panginoon, na may maling katuroan, bigyan mo sila ng tamang katuroan sa mga oras na ito. Nakikiisa po ako, Panginoon, sa panin o Diyos, sa kaligtasan po o Diyos ng mga mga tao po na ito, Panginoon, ng mga lingkod mo o God na nasa kadiliman pa na sila, Panginoon, ay mailagay mo sa tamang katuroan. Salamat po. Salamat po sa mga ganitong pag-aaral o Diyos upang maiopen, Panginoon, ang aming pong mga isip at puso. Salamat din, Panginoon, Lord God, na hindi pa namin aabot, Panginoon, na aming pong mga kaibigan at kababayan, Panginoon, na amin po i-share o God, maibahagi po namin ng katotohanan po upang Panginoon ang katotohanan ang magpalaya po sa bawat isa po sa amin. Salamat Amen. po o Diyos sa napakabuti mo. Salamat po Panginoon pagkat wala ka pong katulad. Salamat Panginoon sapagkat ikaw ay great na Diyos na ikaw noon kahapon ngayon bukas at magpakilanman ipinakita mo sa amin Panginoon Lord God na yung salita mo noon tinutugma mo ngayon at hanggang ngayon Panginoon Lord God ay nasa sa amin Panginoon at nabubuhay Amen. sa amin. Salamat po, salamat sa iyong kabutihan at pag-ibig. 
Salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, see you again. Uh, ano na ngayon? December 14? Yeah, yes, ma'am. December, yeah, December 14. Um, may klase pa po rin tayo sa December 28. Kasi December 21 ay face-to-face class. And then our class here in online for hermeneutics will be December 28. Now, if you are available, but if you cannot, if you are not available on December 28, then I think we will be seeing each other on uh, next year. Yeah? Okay. So God bless you. Let's pray for each other. You pray for us. We pray for you. All right. Thank you.